And that's the LA Chargers. So the LA Chargers, kind of a disappointing end of the season last year, seeing as how they didn't make the playoffs when we all kind of thought they would. Um, as far as offensive talent, they didn't really gain anyone of note. I guess you could say Isaiah Spiller they drafted. I had him as my RB2 going into the uh, draft, like prior to everything that you know happened at the end of the the Kenneth Walker might come on and all that stuff. But Isaiah Spiller was my guy. But as far as everybody else on offense, we're kind of bringing back the same cast of characters. Um, so Justin, we'll start at the top. Justin Herbert, he's been QB2 according to Underdog. Um, in my research, I, I don't see necessarily how that's, that could go wrong. I mean, he's going to be – he's. I'm probably not going to draft him because he's going to go way too high. But I – cannot fault anyone uh, that ends up with Justin Herbert. I'm going to go ahead and bet that he starts the the second run of quarterbacks because I bet somebody's going to go Josh Allen in like the third round and nobody else is going to touch anybody. Then Pat Mahomes might sneak off the board, even though I don't know if we think Pat Mahomes is going to have quite the same year. But then I think that, that, that's, that run of quarterbacks that starts where every team takes one, Justin Herbert will be the headliner of that one. And I can't, can't blame anybody. Justin Herbert's got quite the cast to throw to this year. So we got uh, wide receiver 12 and wide receiver 13 in underdog. That'd be Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. Uh, Joe's going to hate that, that <laughs> Mike Williams is literally being drafted immediately after Keenan Allen when it comes to wide receivers. And they also have a sneaky guy this year in Josh Palmer. So for those of you who don't remember, Josh Palmer was uh, drafted out of Tennessee last year in the third round. Um, this is his year. He's finally going to get into the starting lineup. It looks like, um, as far as where we're at in camp right now, he's currently being drafted wide receiver 67. I would just, just keep that name in mind. I think as we go along in the draft, because I think that he might be a key to this offense, especially if Justin Herbert throws a lot, um, catch on the running backs real quick. Obviously Austin Eckler, he's running back three. I don't think you have a whole lot to worry about. Um, I know I, Earlier this offseason went off on how I think Austin Eckler is going to not live up to that running back three uh, moniker. I still don't think that. I still think it's going to be a run or a throw heavy offense. And I think Isaiah Spiller is going to get more work. He's currently going as an RB44 in underdog, uh, as Isaiah Spiller is. I think you're, I think Isaiah Spiller is going to be a little bit more important than he's being you, uh, viewed as right now. And I think once we get closer to the season, I still think Austin Eckler is going to get a heavy workload. He still should be drafted in the top seven, six of players in the in the draft. I'm not going to try to sway anybody away from that. But he is, I think, going to get some competition from Isaiah Spiller. And then last person on offense is Gerald Everett, and he's going as tight end 18. I don't, I don't love that. I mean, Jared Cook has been good in that offense, um, but I think with Gerald Everett taking over for him in the beginning – I still don't – I mean, Gerald Everett wasn't very good with Russell Wilson, so I, I, I'm, he's going to have to earn my trust at least. I will not be having him on my team. Guys, what do we think about this offense? Josh, you go ahead, man. You took that deep breath. I, 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 was, I, was, I was trying not to overstep you here, but I, if we're <laughs> just going to allow it, then I'm going to go for it. So I have to say, um, Eckler, I think – I mean, he's the number one in this division fantasy-wise uh, coming out of here, so um, nobody's draft, being drafted higher out of this division. Eckler is don't worry about him. Like obviously don't reach for him. Still grab uh, Jonathan Taylor, Christian McCaffrey, maybe Najee above him. Um, but you're not worried about Eckler. Uh, Isaiah Spiller will let, lighten his workload a little bit, but it'll be a good thing because Eckler is, I, and I don't want to say it, but, uh, he's a little guy. Injuries happen in the NFL. So you never know what could happen. Those, those 300 touches that he's gotten the last few years, he needs to stop that. This is a good thing for Eckler. I don't worry about Isaiah Spiller as a bad thing. Also, they've tried so many times to replace, uh, get a second running back there. So this is a good thing. Trust me. Hopefully it works out. Hopefully it's good. Um, and then Josh Palmer, you, honestly, you hit, you hit all the high notes. Um, one thing I will say, I don't think Herbert's the number two quarterback. I love Herbert. I, I will get into this in a second, but uh, he should be number three behind Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen easily. Um, I can't believe he's going number two at the moment, but I do love Herbert. I, I was, I drafted him all over last year cause he was like right in that six, seven range and it worked out really well. So, uh, keep an eye out for Herbert. He, he should be great. Don't worry about him as well. Palmer could be phenomenal. And then I don't need to tell you about Keenan Allen and, uh, the man who doesn't belong in the league, Mike Williams. Yeah. Joe, let's hear about Mike Williams. Oh, Mike Williams. Uh, you guys have heard this before. He was in a contract year last year. 
he got his lazy ass off the couch. He walked into camp. He gave it his all to make all this fucking money, and they gave it to him. He's done nothing his whole career. I mean, yeah, you want to watch him run down a seam, fall into the end zone, look very unathletic, and catch a ball every once in a while. That is Mike Williams. He is not a number 13 wide receiver in fantasy. What he did last year was unsustainable. He had six good weeks, and after that, what happened? Nothing. And he reverted back to the person that he was all along. So wolf in sheep's clothing, no. He's a sheep trying to be a wolf, and he's not (laughs) – not dressing well for it. Um, no. As far as the running backs go, Eckler is a stud. But what I want to pose to you guys, is Isaiah Spiller draftable as a premium handcuff this year? And we're talking about like Alexander Madison range and all that stuff. With Spiller's talent, we've seen Eckler get hurt. We've seen Joshua Kelly. We've seen uh, Jackson fill in there. No one's really jumped off of that. But Spiller's talent could vault him easily up into the top 20 if there was an injury to Eckler. Not preying on that because Eckler is a stud, but I wanted to hear you guys' thoughts on that. Top ten handcuff for sure. I oh easily, I'd say top five handcuff. Uh, I really I love that you brought up the Madison comparison because Madison has been like one of the biggest joke backups. Uh, like he's like, oh well, Dalvin Cook has such a valuable workload, so Madison's great to have. But in reality, Madison's not that great of a running back. We don't know right. what Isaiah Spiller is yet, and he could just be a Joshua Kelly, Larry Roundtree, Josh J- Justin Jackson. So I'm not saying he is. I'm just saying. We don't His know. His pedigree that. is a lot better than so it, a way better. I completely yeah. understand that. And I agree. He was the third best running back in the draft at the very least, maybe second, depending on landing spots and stuff. But I'm just saying we don't know what he is. So do not reach for him is what I'm saying. I'm saying if you grab Eckler and you can get him in the 11th round, 10th round. Sure. For sure. I don't see anything past the ninth round is a, a dart throw at the point anyway. So don't, don't feel like you have to get him. But like if, if you see him and your running backs are a little light, Grab yourself Isaiah Spiller, but don't be like, I have to have Isaiah Spiller. And I, I, would, I, just say, might... I would say if you grab Eckler, Spiller should be at least one of those last round pencil in people that you are for Especially sure. Especially gonna... in something like underdog with the best ball. I mean, you yeah, know, and... he's going at RB 44 right now. So he's getting the rookie hype. And I do expect that to rise a little bit going into the season. But Same. at RB 44, you know, throw a dart on him, especially of Eckler, because that position in that offense is extremely valuable. We know the Chargers are going to put up a ton of points. And, I mean, lastly, what you talked about, you weren't that high on Everett. Um, I think at tight end 18, you could do far worse um, than drafting a guy like Gerald Everett. He showed he can do it with the Rams. Seattle was just an absolute mess last year. We thought he was going to step in. He had a couple good games. He was serviceable. But we want the Chargers offense. There's We want to get a piece of it. If he's your tight end two, he's your tight end three if you're loading up an underdog. You could do far worse than Gerald Everett, you know, draft him, draft the Cole Komet. And I think that's a solid one, two tight end punch to start off your season. Uh, whoa, we're league. not under the bears yet, Joe. Don't just be bringing up your team like that. Nobody I does don't, that. Gotta I don't get think the you're wrong. In there. I don't think you're wrong. It's just, if I'm grabbing a piece of the chargers offense, the last person I want is Gerald Everett. I would take, I, w- I would take Palmer ahead of that just for the sheer potential that Palmer could be, a bigger piece of this puzzle, especially if your fraud Mike Williams take really takes off this year. Yeah. I would say uh, Palmer, Guyton, Gerald Everett, Isaiah Spiller, all in the same ballpark. Fill out that bench at the end. I would, I'd be okay with any of them on my team for the first three weeks. Just see what happens. If there could be an injury, there could be uh, maybe one of them just breaks out. Palmer and Guyton both have had good games. Um, so I like both of those guys as well. I think Guyton's someone that people don't think about. Um, so just keep an eye out. And if Mike will, or Keenan Allen went down, both of those guys would be playing. So we'll see what happens there. But like, yeah, like you said, this is a high powered offense and a team that's going to be playing some really tough games. Uh, we'll get into the schedule in a little bit, but I just, I don't know. I like, I want, I want a part of their passing attack and that's why I would be okay with getting Everett as my backup tight end, because you're not spending a whole lot on your backup tight end. You're getting them at the end. So fair enough. Well, let's so, talk about more or less another... he killed my Trey McKitty shares. I was all about him. Sure so. did. Yeah, the McKitty shares now I got have plummeted. Like have plummeted. They, they went the way of the Doge coin. Um, well, let's get on to the defense, right. which you're also going to want a piece of this offseason. So let's just start with the two premier names at the top. Joey Bosa is going to be a defensive, uh, a DN, uh, probably two or three um, as far as drafts go. Um, I still don't think he's going to crack the obvious names at the top. And then Derwin James is going to be the safety one. 
He's going to be your top defensive back going into each and every draft, I believe. Um, past that, though, they got Joe's boy, Khalil Mack. I still think there's something left in the tank there, and especially with the amount of other people flying around on this uh, defense, I believe that he will be in position to make those impact plays. Uh, Kenneth Murray's been kind of disappointing this far in the defense, but perhaps with just the sheer talent around him, maybe that raises his floor. I think this is maybe a rising tides, you know, lifts all boats kind of situation. I even would take a chance if you need defensive backs, JC Jackson, he's been my favorite, one of my favorite players for the longest time because he's a ball hawk. And then Asante Samuel Jr. is also somebody I think could potentially be serviceable this year, just because, Here's the thing. If you're going to throw the ball, you're probably not going at J.C. Jackson. You're probably not going to go at Derwin James. That leaves you Nazir Adderley or Asante Samuel. And I think Asante Samuel, by the sheer just lowest man on the totem pole situation, is going to get a lot of tackles this year just because I think they may go after him um, as the weak point of this defense, even though I don't think he's that weak. Um, Also, just want to mention Jerry Tillery, defensive end. Don't think he's going to be super important, but he's a name to remember. And then Sebastian Joseph Day for D tackle. If you have somebody that's eligible, if you have a D tackle tackle type of league, I think he's somebody that you could look into because again, this defense on paper is nasty. And I think that you're going to want a piece of this defense because again, like I said, they all got better. So that's going to make the entire defense a little bit better just by the sheer talent around them. Is this the best? Is this the best defense in the NFL right now? On paper, yes. Uh, I mean, I obviously we got to see it in action, but yeah, I mean, looking Death for holes is ridiculous. I, mean, I know because like I didn't even get to Kyle Van Noy. Like literally, yeah. that's a backup. Van Noy was a hell of a pickup and for him. Van Noy he, could be he a, had a He's a game wrecker. And then you know you got Troy Reader, mm-hmm. who was semi serviceable. But the biggest thing is your guy at nickel with Bryce Callahan. Yeah. I mean, you put five DBs out there, and that's that's scary. You're not throwing on those five at all. No, you're not. And that's the, like that it's just picking out who are they going to throw at that is going to get a lot of tackles this season, just because they're not going to try to test JC Jackson or Derwin James. I don't think as much. Like I said it as a joke, but like I literally played Madden against this team and they freaking demolished me with updated rosters. Uh, I got through four picks to pretty much every one of those awesome secondary members, but yeah, I have to say, um, you're. I think Max the true value here for IDP. Joey Bosa, ob- you're that's an obvious one. You're going to get mm-hmm. him as like the third or fourth pick off the board, most likely. I mean, maybe depending on what you do with linebackers. Um, and then Derwin's the number one safety, pretty much undisputed at this point. Um, but Nasir Adderley is pretty serviceable. I have had him in a couple leagues, and he kind of gets that trickle down effect. Like people don't want to throw to Derwin, people don't want to throw Nasir Adderley and Bryce Callahan and Asante Samuel are all going to be relatively serviceable because of the fact, maybe not Bryce Callahan, Callahan with the nickel back, but Adderley and Samuel, because they're not going to want to throw to JC Jackson and Derwin James. And then right. Khalil Mack, I just like his value. I'm, I'm not sure exactly where he's going, but I imagine in that 20, 25 range. So be an interesting place to get a, you know, third round, get a, a defensive end who's got something to prove. Right. And just, just saying right now, this defense is – if you're playing in a team that fields a team defense, they're ranked as number 13 right now. And if you're oh. waiting on defense and you're in a 12-man league, that is just scrumptious. I don't think that's going to – I don't think that's going to stay. I, I don't know how that – how it could stay that way. Just, I mean, on, like I said, again, this is a paper type of what we're guessing right here. But just based on the names on this paper, I don't know how in the world – this defense can be bad this year. But then again, I'd probably say in that and end up being the worst in the league. But this is exactly is why this is exactly why team exactly. defenses need to not be a freaking thing because that doesn't make any sense. That's yeah, should... being number 13. Top, top three, at least. I mean, I know there's other better defenses, but man. Yeah, right. I think we're going to advise this entire season before I get to the over under. I think this entire season, just what's this blanket statement? You're probably going to want to back off your wide receivers when they're playing the chargers. I mean, unless you have one of the top elite talents in the league, it probably is not going to be the week that you try to trot out somebody that's probably going to fail against these guys because JC Jackson's locked down. Derwin is not going to allow a tight end to be serviceable. over the middle. Like, it's just not going to happen. I, I we'll see what happens, but I just, have a lot of belief in this team and I'm probably going to advise people not to start their players against the chargers. Yeah. Chiefs chargers games are going to be interesting, especially with no Tyree kill for the 
deal breaker. Right. Because it's like, who is Patrick Mahomes going to throw the ball to? And I don't know. We'll, get, and we'll to get to that next. We will get to that. So the Chargers over under is 10 games, and I am way over. Way over, you said. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take All it. All right. So we got starting off with the week 17 matchup against Vegas, then Kansas City, Jacksonville, Houston, Cleveland. So kind of a softball start there. But then we go get- Denver, Seattle, Atlanta, San Francisco, Kansas City. Arizona, the Raiders again, Miami, Tennessee, Indianapolis, L.A. Rams, Denver. Okay, so the Rams will probably lose to the Chiefs once, even if they lost to the Chiefs both times, and then maybe they lost to Denver once. I still think it's like 12-13. I split the Denver and KC games and still had 12. Yeah, just so to give them- I just think this has to be over. I mean, they'll probably lose a stupid game in here somewhere. I was but like, they just about to say, game. I really hope the Chargers lose that lose that losing one by one point and by one score and by like a missed field goal and all the bullshit they've had. Yeah. that That's how you're going to have to beat them this year, because I just don't see how with this offense and this defense, what can go wrong. So Staley yeah. is still the coach. I, I I do like me some Staley. That is a good point. It is Staley, the, the coach, which some people really hate and some people really like. So this is, this is literally a Madden team right here. They literally built this and they were like, yeah, that works. It is. So we'll see how the chemistry works. I'm over. Josh over. Joe. I'll go over. Is over as well. Yeah. I'll go over. I... 